can't go forward, can't go back Set your mind at the sea, hold your relax Throw yourself a party wherever you're at The dancer blues the party, tomorrow you can start Finding a way back to civilization Stay, stay, stay. and have a good time, no need to pay, pay The pleasure is mine, until the train, train He's ready to climb again No need to worry, folks. We'll get everyone situated in your new home. Vault 111. A better future underground. Located overlooking Sanctuary Hills, vault designed Vault 111 to observe the effects of long-term cryogenic suspended animation on unsuspecting test subjects. Vault 111 staff consisted of an overseer and a small team of scientists security guards, and facility maintenance personnel employed on a short-term basis. Test subjects were lured to Vault 111 from the nearby neighborhoods of Sanctuary Hills and Concord. On the morning of the Great War, many of the residents had known that America was being bombed, causing a group to flee to Vault 111. A nuke on the horizon caused a blast all the way to Vault 111 with these particular survivors barely making it inside. Soon after, the residents were given their jumpsuits and were placed in stasis pods after being told deceitfully that the purpose of the pods was for decontamination. According to vault standard operating procedures, Vault 111 was to remain sealed for a minimum of 180 days. After which the vault could be opened upon receipt of an all-clear signal from vault or at the overseer's discretion. However, after the 180-day mandatory shelter period elapsed, Vault 111 received no signal, and its staff faced dwindling supplies. Despite requests from the security staff, the overseer refused to unseal the vault door, concerned that the radiation outside the vault had not declined enough to be survivable. Shortly after, a faction led by the vault's security and support staff engaged in mutiny against the overseer in an effort to unseal the vault door and leave the vault. In response, the overseer placed the vault on lockdown and demanded all staff to hand over any food, weapons, and medicine. There is no further account of events to be found, as the logs end here on both the security terminal and the overseer's terminal. In 2227, the Institute had discovered the location of the vault, along with the fact that it contained an infant whose DNA would be completely uncorrupted by post-war radiation. Seeking a source of pure human DNA to form the basis of their Generation 3 synths, they sent their agent and two scientists to retrieve the infant. Unlike other vaults, the entrance to Vault 111 not only has an atypical pneumatic hull but also acts as a hatch which gives way to an interior elevator. The inner door opens first, followed by the hatch opening. There was also a security checkpoint, a feature that most other vaults lacked. Most of the other rooms in Vault 111 include a reactor room, a recreational area for vault staff and the overseer's office. The vault is significantly smaller as compared to other vault tech vaults due to the nature of the experiment. However, despite the complete lack of maintenance for nearly 210 years, in 2287 the vault interior is in good condition compared to other abandoned vaults encountered in the capital wasteland, the Mojave wasteland and even some of the other vaults within the Commonwealth. 